Welcome everyone. My name is William Mills and I am the athletic trainer at Malvern Prep School and a graduate student at Rocky Mount University. My interest of study is in concussion, specifically g-forces and posterior control or what I call the gap study. Mild traumatic brain injury or MTBI is a serious health problem in the United States. Over the last two decades, sports-related MTBI has received an increasing amount of popular and scientific attention. Sports are second only to motor vehicle collisions as the leading cause of traumatic brain injury among people aged 15 to 24 years of age. There are estimates that 1.6 million to 3.8 million sports-related MTBI occur each year, including those which no medical care is sought. The goal of the study is to identify parameters to determine athletes who have sustained MTBI by measuring linear and rotational forces to the head and the relationship to posture, postural control. Mild traumatic brain injury represents an estimated 8.5% to 13.2% of all high school athletic injuries. This is most likely a low percent because many of these injuries go unrecognized and as many as 50% of MTBI go unreported by athletes. Chronic unreported MTBI is an important problem of academic proportion in the high school setting. Some of the reasons for this are athletes do not recognize the symptoms of a MTBI or they are reluctant to report the injury because of fear they will not be because of the fear they will be taken out of practice or a game. This failure to report a MTBI can lead to a catastrophic event such as second impact syndrome. This is when the brain can shut down its functioning on a subsequent applied force while the brain the athlete's brain is still experiencing a MTB, MTBI event. Additionally, if an athlete continues to play and ex ex exacerbates the symptoms, this could lead to longer recovery periods. The complexity of a MTBI leads to a convolution of assessment tools. This is not a perfect diagnostic test. There is not a perfect diagnostic test for an immediate diagnosis of an MTBI in the athletic environment. Rather, MTBI are diagnosed with clinical signs and or symptoms. No study has previously analyzed real-time non-observable signs of MTBI by way of linear and rotational forces and exposure in athletic environment. So our aims for our study are as follows. Identify linear and rotational forces and the number of impacts sustained to the brain of a lacrosse player during the season. Also, we're going to try to identify linear and rotational forces to the brain that occur to lacrosse players during the season, as well as the number of impacts. Describe a relationship between G-forces and postural control, and also identify MTBI of an athlete by employing impact technology that measures linear and rotational forces to the brain. And here you can see we will use um, also, what we're measuring for postural control is sway velocity, which is the most important. We found that with, uh, with uh, student athletes that have sustained a concussion, their sway velocity is a lot faster because they overcompensate for recentering themselves. And then we're also going to measure stability and the path length. For our independent variable, we are going to um, choose a G-force threshold. This spring, currently, we are measuring G-forces because we don't know what the G-force G-forces are in lacrosse. And right now, I'm just using 40 G-forces based off of a lot of research with soccer and football. Again, we're trying to measure non-symptomatic signs of concussion, so we need to find what the threshold is. By doing a pilot this year, that will help us at least know whether or not 40 G-forces is too high or too low um, of a choice. 
And then the other independent uh, control is, uh, or, or independent variable is our control uh, group. Basically what will happen is uh, an athlete during practice will sustain whatever our threshold is of a g-force and let's choose 40. So they sustain a 40 g-force. We will pull them off the field with a control, take them to the athlete training room, and there we will measure um, one of our dependent variables. Prior to the season we are doing a pretest. We're doing a baseline posture control test on a force plate um, as well as doing the BESS which is the balance error scoring system. And then when we bring them into the training room after the G-force uh, threshold was um, uh, measured we will do a post test of the posture control on those two kinds of um, uh, measurements the on the force plate as well as on the um, uh, as well as doing the best instrumentation well partly we're going to do a um, one of the instruments that we're going to be using is we're going to do a questionnaire and we will be developed and we'll be developed to investigate if the player had previous history of concussion how many and when and whether or not the lacrosse player had prior injury to an ankle, knee, or hip in the last six months. In addition, we are going to collect demographic information, which will uh, collect things such as height, weight, age, and position of our lacrosse player. And data will be collected, and the data collection will also include a concussion graded symptom checklist, um, which has a sensitivity of 0.89 and a specificity of 1.0. We'll be using the balance system from CSMI in order to measure, as mentioned before, average velocity, stability, and path length. Right now we are working on the software where we can actually do measure all that we want to on the balance system as well as do the balance error scoring system with the best on top of the force place all at the same time. Right now we don't have that capability so we will actually do this test separate but we were hopeful that we'll actually be able to do both at the same time um, as far as the balance systems concerned it has a Pearson's correlation to the reference standard which is a force plate um, of R less than 0.996 and an interclass correlation to the reference standard of 0.77 to 0.89 which is excellent as far as the best test is concerned and that alone has an interclass class correlation coefficients to re the reference standard of 0.78 to 0.96 which is also excellent. The last instrumentation is a G-Force tracker. It's a little device shown here in the little black box next to the lacrosse helmet and it fits inside the helmet which will measure real-time linear and rotational acceleration and also location of the impacts. Here you can see inside the helmet the G-Force tracker is placed. This is a CPXR lacrosse helmet. I was lucky enough to be in Ohio State for two days testing and trying to validate the G-Force tracker. The G-Force tracker has already been validated in ice hockey helmets in this lab specifically with these tests. So now we're doing it with lacrosse helmets. So again, the G-Force tracker is placed right here, but we also place one back in here and also under the ear. You would only have one G-Force tracker placed in the helmet. But the reason why we have three in there because we're also trying to find what the best location is going to be. We know it's not rec right next to the skull, so we know there's going to be a formula that, formula that we're going to have to use for the error, for the distance. But for, we don't really know what the location might be. So we put place three G-Force trackers in the helmet while we did our different tests. And then this picture right here is that what we do is we're calibrating the G-Force trackers on this head right here. I don't know if you can see that, but this is a head form. It's a hybrid 3 ATD. And it also has hair on there, and we wet the hair as if the athlete was sweating. We place the helmet onto this um, ATD, and then we calibrate the location of this helmet sitting on that specific head. And we would have to do that for each and every athlete, only that one time. This is kind of a unique test here. Um, this form is normally permanent. This is the piece that comes out and shoots and hits the helmet. It's different times, different kinds of uh, speeds, which I will um, mention in the next slide. Um, 
But what's different is this sliding platform right here. Uh, this was made by the physics department at Ohio State and we thought it'd be a little bit more realistic to have a head form here uh, the white of uh, the weight of a body of a lacrosse uh, player and when they get hit they'll actually move away from it instead of having a permanent form that just hits there and and it's taken it we wanted to uh, put it on a moving platform as if the athlete was falling now this slide here will show you um, we if you look to the left there, you can see where the, um, the device came out and actually hit the helmet and made contact there. And then this is just one still um, picture of the motion. That head form would actually then end up sliding down the pathway. We tested at speeds of 1.5 meters per second, 2.5 meters per second, 3.775 or excuse me, 3.75 meters per second, 4.5.0 meters per second. And then we also had several locations. We hit the side of the helmet. We hit the oblique back, uh, approximately 60 degrees, uh, the back of the helmet, the front oblique, which is 45 degrees, and also the front of the helmet. So we performed approximately four tests at each one of these speeds at each one of those locations. And on the second test, um, we also did a high-speed video of as well. So right here you can see um, what we did is over here, if you look in the left picture, you'll see this is the camera, and then we turn the lights on, and this is the uh, computer measuring the high-speed, um, using high-speed video to uh, measure what the move, when the collision hits and the movement and the reaction of the head form uh, for further analysis. And um, we did that. So we did approximately um, 70 or 80 some tests in two days um, to do this to validate again the G force tracker so we can use this to measure um, the G forces in our study. The study design is a quasi experimental, non equivalent pre test, post test control group design. And we use analysis of covariant um, because we wish to conduct a study comparing groups, but, we'll, but we need to adjust the scores of the dependent variable uh, for the influence of another dependent variable, which is our, our pretest. So the covariant uh, variant is our pretest, and it can have influence on our post-test. So, uh, so we decided to use analysis of covariance. Um, to do, do our analysis of our data. We expect to find a direct correlation between linear and rotational forces to the brain and its effects on posterior control. We also expect to find significant g-force measurements occurring during body-to-body -body collisions during the cross practice or games compared to body-to-ground or the instrument like a lacrosse ball or a lacrosse stick um, hitting the body or the head. So that is my presentation for my study and thank you for uh, paying attention and have a good evening.